Hello, this is Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. In today's video, we are doing this really cool home studio build. We are doing full acoustic walls with integrated track LED lighting. Really cool build. Stay tuned for how we did everything step by step, and we will get into it shortly. So here is the starting room. This is in a home basement. This used to be the client's gym room, which they're now converting into the studio. Nice space to be converting into the studio and they have the rubber floor from the gym still in there. So that's nice as well. This is just our blank slate starting point. And the very first step we are going to do is just mark out where these bulkheads end on the wall. Uh, we discussed with the client uh, that the acoustic walls will end where these bulkheads are and that the final trim will butt up against the drywall of those bulkheads just to give a nice finished look. So we're just marking that out for the client. We're doing everything in masking tape so we can get approval from the client uh, with a non-permanent uh, marking on their walls. So just marking out above the electrical outlets there and then now I'm marking out three quarters of an inch away from the drywall for our final wood trim. I'm using one by four, uh, which has a final dimension of three quarters of an inch for my final trim. So just marking that out in the spots where there's gonna be an exterior casing, like around those, uh, around that window and right here along the door. And the acoustic wall will be ending where those bulkheads end as well. And you can see all of our markings there. The lumber I'm using to frame this is two by two by eight lumber. And I'm just marking out all of the stud locations here so that I know where I need to screw this in to be nice and secure. I am using three inch construction screws and just an impact driver, and I'm pre-drilling the holes. And what I'm doing right here is just getting two screws uh, pre-drilled into this length of wood, so that way I, it's easier for me to mount it by myself. So just getting that screwed in on the left side there, and I'm just putting a screw in the wall just to hold it while I get more screws. And there we go, now I can go in and get this secured into the studs. So these two by twos are making up our exterior framing of the wall. This is what's gonna contain our one and a half inch thick acoustic insulation. And the final dimension of the two by two is one and a half inch as well. So same way on the front wall, just marking out the stud location, getting my exterior frame where I want the wall to end, uh, framed out in the two by two. So you can see I left that three quarters of an inch uh, before the door casing for our final trim and doing the same thing here around the opening for the window. So just framing everything up and we did everything in masking tape first just to get approval from the client with a non-permanent way of uh, marking on the wall. And we can just go right on top of that. That'll get covered with the final trim. And same thing above the outlets, we left all of this electrical um, exposed just for convenience for the client and so that we have access to run the electrical into the wall uh, for the LED lighting so that's going to come later. So really cool wraparound design for these acoustic walls. The client will have on their front wall just their full studio setup and on the side wall having like a content creation background. Uh, so it's really cool design and then in the back left corner they're going to have their vocal booth as well. So this is what we agreed with with the client as the exterior framing size for our acoustic wall. Now what I'm doing here is on both interior corners, I'm just getting bracing on both sides of the wall so that way I have something to staple the fabric to um, once we are done insulating and building the light frames uh, for this wall because we need something, we need some sort of wood there to have as a stapling uh, backing when we finally upholster this wall at the end of the build. So there it is. And here's the lighting that we're using. The client already had this lighting. This is just Govi strip lighting, um, super commonly available on Amazon. These are the 16 foot lengths. So just rolling this out. And what I'm doing to be able to mock up the lighting design is I'm marking out 16 feet of masking tape, which is the same length as our LED strips. And now I can use this 16 foot length of masking tape to just kind of mock up a design to show the client so that's what we did. We, we did a few revisions and we mocked everything up. The client had six of these LED strips. So we did six 16 foot lengths of tape. Some of the strips were shorter just to make the design more appealing. 
Um, this was the first revision, and then here is the second revision that we ended up agreeing on. And we followed this design uh, with the wood. So now I'm using two by three construction lumber because I'm accounting for the light track, which is about maybe uh, half an inch wide uh, so that I have room to staple fabric on both sides of this track. So I'm just following the masking tape and screwing in the two by three lumber now and just getting all my angled cuts to make sure everything fits within the exterior two by two frame. So this is just gonna provide backing for the light tracks, the aluminum light tracks that we're gonna be installing, which is gonna hold all the LED strips. So now that we have the backing for the light strips installed, we can start installing the track, the aluminum track that's gonna hold the light strips. And uh, first we are adding some bracing in this right side wall. The client's gonna have their keyboards mounted on this wall. So we are just adding in some wooden bracing uh, so they have something solid to screw into behind the fabric. Now I'm marking out where my final trim is going to end because that's going to show me where my light track can end. Um, that new location with the arrows, that's actually the new trim because we decided on two by three or one by three rather instead of one by four for the exterior trim. Now here is the light tracks. This is also commonly available on Amazon. It's just an aluminum track, these mounting clips, and it comes with uh, white plastic light diffusers just so that you don't see all the dots of the LED strips um, and just to have it covered as well. So I just screw in all the provided hardware. It comes with screws with, for these clips. And I do about six inches from the end of both sides and just screw it in right in the center of our wood backing that we installed, the two by three wood backing. And we can get all of our light strips installed and they just cut to size. So just getting everything cut to size, screwed in with the clips. For all these sm small pieces, I still did two clips just to make sure everything's nice and secure. And I can just follow all of my lines from the track that, that we made earlier and get all these light strip tracks installed. So you can see there that we the tracks are ending right where our final trim is going to be. That way, when we finally upholster and install our final trim, we know that the light track is ending right where it needs to. And now when it comes to these interior corners, two of these strips are gonna be continuing, like wrapping around the walls. So I cut a little 45 degree bevel on that strip. So that way this strip, when it comes in to meet it, will have a closer fit. So that way when we install the light track covers at the end, everything will be a nice tight fit. And those small gaps uh, between the aluminum isn't the biggest deal because that's all gonna be covered by the light strip covers. So just finalizing, the front wall and the side wall here, you can see kind of that wraparound design and the design worked out really well how we left that space open in the middle of the right side wall there to account for the client's keyboards. And uh, just a lot of fitting, just making sure that all of our angles are cut nicely. Once again, here in this wraparound section, I cut 45 degree bevels on both of those strips. So that way when we butt up each aluminum track against each other, it has a nice tight fit. Here's a little close up of the clip hardware going in. It's just one small Phillips screw that's included with the light tracks and just simply sides right into those clips. And you can see our track ending right there where the final trim is going to be. And I did end up reinforcing this piece of light track wood um, with another screw into the stud as well. Here is the strip lights, once again, the Govi RGB IC lights. Uh, what's nice with these, they can just be controlled by the app, so the client can just control everything from their phone. And I'm going underneath that track there, wherever they cross, and just adding some electrical tape um, over the light strip, just to protect from the aluminum track um, before we install the, the remaining strips. Now with this excess on this strip, I am covering it with black electrical tape just to block out the light because these the rest of this strip will just be hidden behind the acoustic wall, behind the fabric. And this is how I'm getting the electrical into the wall. I'm using just a, I believe it's a three quarter of an inch hole saw there on my drill and just making uh, two notches on this two by two frame uh, where the electrical can go in from the outlet up into the wall. And you'll see how we do that in a second. Um, 
because this will all be covered by the final trim and the fabric. So any of these notches that we're making in the wall to add in the electrical won't be visible in the end product. So same thing with that strip, uh, just wrapping all of the excess lighting strip uh, with black electrical tape and just tucking it inside the wall so it's not gonna be visible. So we can just go ahead and get this done for all six of our strips. And there's the hole saw I'm using. And you can see just the little notch that we create there just to allow for all the wiring for everything. And we can tuck everything in and this will all be hidden by the insulation and the fabric and the trim behind the wall. And you can see we just have the the actual remote controllers underneath the wall for access if the client's Wi-Fi or anything is down and they need to physically um, adjust the lights, they have access to the physical switches. There is all the lighting installed and tested in the tracks. Really cool design and we are ready for insulation. So we are using for this build Rockwool Comfort Board 80. This is a uh, rigid acoustic insulation. This is what we have readily available to us here in Canada. Um, depending on where you are located, you might may have other insulation options that you want to go with. Uh, this is what we have available to us here in the Toronto area. So that's what we decided to go with. So just getting it cut to size and put into the wall and it just fits in between our wooden tracks here. So um, just cutting and fitting and we can have as many pieces as it needs to be. Uh, just trying to account for as much surface area as possible just to minimize the cutting and just to be most efficient, have as little waste as possible with our insulation. Um, but as you can see, this is all of our walls insulated now. And we just left the spaces there for uh, small spaces where we need the light or the electrical access. And now we are ready to start upholstering. So I'm just using a pneumatic stapler uh, with my air compressor. And here is the black crushed velvet fabric we are using. This is a four-way stretch. And stretch fabric's not necessary, but it does make the installation process a little bit easier. And what I'm doing is I'm going just right above the lighting system and I'm keeping the lights on. That way I can just know exactly where those tracks are as I'm stapling the fabric in and just getting the one side secured and just doing a few feet at a time from top and bottom just to make sure that uh, the tension is equal um, along the fabric as I am upholstering. So just going around that window opening, trying to hold the fabric where it would naturally be if it followed that upper line there. And just going around the whole perimeter of the room. And it was the perfect amount of fabric, thankfully, uh, for this build. And everything all worked out well. So just getting everything stapled in. And then I can just finalize those gaps. And now I'm just being very careful um, as I go along where our electrical enters the wall, just to make sure I'm only adding a staple where it needs to be and we're not getting in the way or actually like stapling into any of the electrical, right? So just going around and finalizing all of this now and just making sure all of my staples are in where they need to be. Now we can start stapling around the actual fabric tracks. So since we used a two by three piece of wood to go around our fabric track or around the light track rather, we have about an inch and a quarter um, of space but on each side of the light track to be able to staple our fabric to. So I'm just going ahead and stapling all of this down and I'm using a lot of staples here because I don't want the fabric to curl back once I actually cut all the fabric off of the light tracks to expose the light. I don't want that fabric to curl back and be exposed when we put our final trim. Uh, so I'm just using a lot of staples along the tracks there. And there is our walls fully stapled in and this is ready to be trimmed. Uh, we can just cut off all the excess fabric here because all of our staple marks will be covered by the final wood trim and any of the exposed wood of the frame will be covered up uh, with the final wood trim around the window casing there and the door as well. So I'm just using my pliers to pinch out a little bit of that fabric so I can get in with my scissors and once I open it up then I can just cut this along the track just being careful not to cut the light track or just to, or to knock it with the scissors there. And this was a satisfying process, just exposing the light strips uh, and really getting a sense of how it's going to look in the room and how much light is, it's actually going to uh, let off into the room. So at this point, we're close to being finished. 
Um, the tedious part is all of the trim, especially uh, going around these light tracks and with all the angles. But at least now at this stage of the build, we can kind of get a good idea of what the final product's going to look like. Here is all the trim that I'm using. This is a, a half inch by three inch MDF. This is, it came in 10 feet uh, lengths and it was already primed. So we are just hitting it with a flat black paint, which is what the client decided upon. And we are hitting it on the edges as well, because uh, that will all be exposed um, once this is installed on the walls. So we got everything painted and dried. And once everything's dry, we're ready to start installing this in. And kind of the same premise as when we were making our two by two exterior track, we're gonna be just doing all of our exterior trim in this half inch by three inch wide. We're using a 18 gauge brad nailer. I'm using one inch nails for our half inch thick trim. And you can see I'm just starting from that window casing or the bulkhead rather, and just making sure it's lined up with my wall and just tacking it in. And there will be seams at um, all of the joints and those will all get wood filled, sand and touch up painted at the end of the build. So you can see there, we got the trim in and you can see those joints there. Um, not a big deal. It's gonna, gonna all get wood filled, sanded and touch up paint on it just to make it a nice finished look once it's all done. Same thing with the front wall here. And you can see us marking out where our final trim is gonna be, allows us to get right up to that uh, light track with it still um, being like a really nice uh, flush fit. So I ripped these lengths of trim in half to fit around the light tracks. We didn't wanna use the three inch trim on both sides of the light track. It would have been way too bulky of a trim look. We wanna have as much of this uh, black crushed velvet fabric exposed as possible. So I cut these three inch lengths in half, giving us about an inch and a half of trim on each side of the light track. So now I'm using my angle finder just to find out each angle uh, for the one and a half inch trim that's going around on each side of the Aluminum light tracks here. You can see that tells us um, the degree that we need to set our miter saw to. Um, and we can just use that gauge to scribe the mark uh, with pencil onto our trim. And just between that, whatever cuts I can get with my miter saw, my miter saw only goes up to 45 degrees. So whatever cuts I can get with the miter saw I'm getting and any cuts that are steeper or more aggressive of an angle than that, I'm using my table saw. So I'm just scribing it on with the, t with the uh, using the angle gauge to scribe the marking with the pencil onto the trim. And then I'm cutting with either the miter saw or with the table saw. And um, patience is key with this step. And it's way better to cut too little and have to do like a whole bunch of test cuts and test fits to get it perfect than to cut too much off. Because once you cut too much off, then you have too big of a gap. And any gaps that are too big are going to be... It's gonna not look right if you try to wood fill it. We want these gaps to be as tight as possible. That way we have minimal wood filler and it just minimizes the amount of sanding and touch of paint and all that we have to do. So you can see for those aggressive angles there, I'm just using the table saw to get my cuts and just test fitting back and forth as much as I need to and just take off a little bit each time until it fits perfectly. These little sections here had the most aggressive angles for those table saw cuts, but here you can see all of the trim installed and really, really tightens up the look of these walls to have the trim put in uh, and to not have any staples exposed is a, um, it's a big improvement on the final aesthetics of this build. And now I'm just measuring out for my final casing. Uh, for these, instead of using the half inch MDF, we're using the actual one by four. Um, this is just a select pine and just scribing all my marks in. So the final dimensions is flush with the the existing trim there of the wall and just cutting it down on my table saw and between the miter saw and the table saw I'm I just painted them, them there uh, so that way everything matches nice when we put them in and same thing once those are all tacked in we can wood fill anywhere that is necessary here you can see all the gaps that are going to get wood filled so we tried to keep these clearances as tight as possible you're going to have some gaps here and there I am no finished carpenter myself um, I am happy with how close I got um, and the wood filler takes care of the rest. So there is the wood filler and I'm just uh, applying it into all the joints here. And you can be really liberal with the stuff you want to get extra on there. It's going to get sanded away to leave a flush finish. And I'm just using a card there just to help me uh, fill out that gap right there. 
And once this hardens, then we can sand it down. So just going around the whole room, anywhere that there's a joint, um, just hitting it with the wood filler and letting it dry before we sand it. So getting those wood pieces tacked in, the exterior trim there all tacked in. And now that the wood filler is dry, we can go in with the sander. I'm just using a foam sanding block here um, and just hitting it until it's smooth to the touch. Uh, it doesn't need to be too aggressive the sanding here. Uh, we just want to have a nice smooth surface so that way when we go over with our touch-up paint, uh, we just have like a nice uh, finished, finished look. So just going around the whole room, anywhere that we would fill, just getting it sanded so it's all ready for paint. And just going in with the touch-up paint now, just being careful not to get anything on the fabric. I'm just going around holding a just a thin piece of cardboard uh, to give me like backing behind any of the light tracks or behind the fabric where I need to. So there you can see the touch-up paint has been applied and we have a way nicer finished look now. And now the last thing to do is to apply these light diffusers into the light tracks. And these are just plastic um, and they just kind of press fit right into the track. This step's a little bit tricky. You kind of have to push pretty hard and just kind of line up the ridges where it kind of snaps into the light track. Um, but just wiggle it around, you'll get it in and um, just apply some good pressure and they just snap right into place. Now, anywhere that I had a joint that was meeting up with another light track or right at the end of the light track where it met the wall, I was using a piece of masking tape just to scribe the edge on for me. And I just used scissors to cut it and just snap them in place. Here is the final look of these acoustic walls with the light strips uh, diffused. It adds a really nice finished look. Um, really happy with how this build came together. The client's super happy with it. Can't wait to see when they get their desk and all their gear and everything in. Hope you learned something. Please subscribe for more. This has been Daniel from soundheadquarters.com. Thanks for watching.